anxious for answers from the chairperson of the Electoral Commission as a returning officer of the December 2020 presidential elections. Ghanaians were hoping to hear her testify, and many are still baffled by the refusal of Mrs. Jean Mensa to be held to account by testifying in this case. Unfortunately, with the unanimous agreement of the justices of the Supreme Court. The vital part of the process to establish the truth and hold Mrs. Mensah accountable was blocked time and again by a protective cordon and firewall that I'm sure has confounded many Ghanaians. The refusal of this chairperson is in sharp contrast to the readiness with which Dr. Kwejo Afarijan then Chairman of the Electoral Commission, willingly testified in the 2013 election petition filed by then candidate Nana Akufuado of the MPP. Speaking as a Ghanaian with no legal training, I believe that the refusal of the Electoral Commission chairperson to testify in this election petition leaves a very bad precedent for the future. I disagree with the suggestions of our justices that an election petition is akin to any other civil litigation, and therefore an EC chairperson whose functions go to the heart of our democracy can, by a legal slate of hand, avoid accounting for his stewardship in an appropriate forum such as the highest court of the land. A legal team led by Mr. Chachuchikata put together our case in a clear manner. Which left no one in doubt about the issues that were at stake. Apart from seeking to ensure compliance with the Constitution and for the true choice of the people of Ghana to be respected, the petition sought to provide opportunity for transparency and accountability in the management of our electoral process. But no one who followed the proceedings of the Supreme Court will be surprised with the judgment pronounced a few hours ago. Much as I'm aware that we are legally bound by the decision of the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court of Ghana, I disagree with the process of the trial and the ruling of the court. For the avoidance of that, I say much as I'm aware that we are legally bound by the decisions of the Supreme Court, I disagree with the process of the trial and the ruling of the court. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our 1992 Constitution says very directly in Article 125, Section 1, that justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the Republic by the judiciary, which shall be independent and subject only to this Constitution. I believe that law should not be an instrument for partisan purposes. I also believe that the rule of law should mean one rule for all. But of course, the rule of law is equality and fairness to all, irrespective of creed, background, or political coloration. Justice, we must remember, is rooted in moral foundations. Ghanaians will always remember that moment when my lead counsel, Mr. Chachuchikata, quoted from the Holy Bible, urging the justices of the Supreme Court to be faithful to their judicial oath and their conscience, only for the lawyer representing the second respondent to argue for the exclusion of God in this matter. And yet in the courts of Ghana, including the Supreme Court, we swear on the Bible or the cross as we also do with the Holy Quran, 
to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Ghanaians will also remember, and this will go in, into history, this 2021 election petition for that profound moment when the chairperson of the Electoral Commission opted to evade public scrutiny. Everything was done in this trial to prevent the Commission from accounting to the people in whose name they hold office. Requests for interrogatories were dismissed. A request for inspection of documents in the possession of the Commission was turned down. The request for admission of facts was ignored. And worse still, she was aided by her counsel and the court to avoid explaining to the good people of Ghana from her own testimony under oath in a properly constituted court of law the errors that she herself admits to have committed in the declaration of the 2020 presidential election results. This is a clear stab in the heart of transparency and accountability to the sovereign people of Ghana. Whatever the reasons for not allowing Mrs. Jean Mensah to testify or answer any questions, it leaves an embarrassing stain, not only on our justice delivery system, but also on our nation's electoral system, which has deepened the grave doubts harbored by many Ghanaians about the true outcome of the December 2020 presidential elections. Ladies and gentlemen, the motto of Ghana's Electoral Commission is transparency, fairness, and integrity. Principles that the key actors of the Electoral Commission clearly failed to live up to on this occasion. The refusal to account to Ghanaians further sets the worrying precedent. And I do really worry about this dangerous precedent that may allow other heads of state institutions to adopt an approach of opacity and non-accountability in their work, just because they know they can rely on unconvincing interpretations of our laws to shield them from scrutiny in the near future when they are held to account. I hope and pray that time will prove me wrong. There's a famous legal maxim brought into common use by Lord Chief Justice Hewat in 1924, that justice must not only be done, but should manifestly and undoubtedly be seen to be done. While judgment was given in this petition, it cannot be said by many to have been seen to be done by the constant unanimous strictures placed on the petitioner in laying out his case. I followed the proceedings of this petition and listened to the testimony of our General Secretary Johnson Asidun Ketia from beginning to end. I'm quite alarmed at the mutilation of his testimony in the Supreme Court ruling. Indeed, the ruling I heard today virtually makes our witness, Johnson Asir Dunketia, appear like the star witness of the first and second respondents. Many answers of his testimony in cross-examination were taken out of context to create the basis for the dismissal of our election petition. At the appropriate time, the legal team will come out with detailed comments on today's judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, this case will go into the Ghana Law Reports for the future, and academics and students of law alike will clearly find befuddling the internal contradictions in our jurisprudence. The Supreme Court has given its verdict, but the national debate on the dismal state of our democracy and the increasing weakness of our state institutions has only just begun. It is time we all come together to confront those who seek to destroy the very democratic system that brought them into office. It is our patriotic duty to do so. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it bears reiterating that our grievances with the conduct of the 2020 elections was not limited to just the presidential elections. Doubts about the Commission's commitment to fairness and transparency have lingered much longer than the duration of this petition. The doubts have attended the, the, every action, and rightly so, because of their posturing and sometimes duplicitous conduct. As I've alluded to in the past, the current leadership of the Commission was installed after the politically motivated removal of the previous Commission. Since then, every step they have taken has appeared to be calculated at ensuring the return of the appointing authority in power. Aside from the compilation of a new register in the midst of a pandemic, one that many civil society organizations, political and governance experts, insist was more procurement-minded than needs-based, the time-tested process of consultation and dialogue among stakeholders through the Interparty Advisory Committee was supplanted by unilateralism. This has not boded well for harmonious relationship with stakeholders. Compared to the two previous leaderships of the Commission, what we have now does not meet even the minimum requirement of neutrality and non-partisanship. And these are two essential principles for consolidating our democracy. Today, the much-touted independence of our Electoral Commission exists only in name. This should give all Ghanaians cause for worry. Today, we still have, as a member of the Commission, done by previous commissioners could have addressed the issues and righted the wrongs in order to make court actions completely unnecessary. Therefore, it is not surprising that international election observers who attended on the last election identified collation and tallying of results as one of the challenges of our 2020 election. The posture and approach of this current Electoral Commission does not inspire confidence that is needed to preside over any transparent, free and fair election. Indeed, this Commission has absolutely no reason to re continue to remain in office. This is because the Electoral Commission must remain a neutral arbiter and uh, organizer of elections. The Electoral Commission must not have a vested interest in the dubious victory of one party over another. The loyalty of the Electoral Commission must be to the people of Ghana and the constitution from which it derives its mandate, and not the president or party under whose tenure the leadership is appointed. Immediate reforms reflecting the long-standing image and reputation of our Electoral Commission as one of the finest and most credible on the continent, and indeed in the world, must be one of the focuses of public advocacy if future elections are to be devoid of needless tensions and anxiety. My brothers and sisters, we cannot forget the burning issue of the deliberate exclusion of the good people of Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe, and Lolobi Sao from the parliamentary elections of 2020. This constitutes perhaps the gravest injustice of the 2020 elections perhaps even greater than the election petition. It can easily fit into the worst forms of electoral trickery ever witnessed in our nation's history. 
Despite the shenanigans employed by the conspirators in this issue, it is abundantly clear that the rights of the people of South to vote was intentionally violated as part of a move to ensure the predetermined election outcome of a particular uh, parliamentary constituency. This represents unparalleled abuse of power by both the government and its handmaiden. the Electoral Commission to influence the outcome of the parliamentary election in that constituency. It is even more staggering that no one has stepped forward to take responsibility for this unjustifiable action nor indicated any clear remedy for the harm that has been caused the good people of Sao. We cannot as a people countenance this kind of gerrymandering and chickenry in our politics. We must with one accord demand immediate resolution of the impasse in the South area and take urgent steps to afford the people their right to vote and be represented in Ghana's parliament. My brothers and sisters, we entered the 2020 elections against an incumbent that was determined to abuse power and misuse state resources and institutions to achieve an electoral victory. The run-up to the election and some of the process involved were characterized by intimidation and harassment from state security agents and others loyal to the current regime. Selective deployment of the military was used as a tool to instill fear in some of our citizens to dissuade them from taking part in the voter registration exercise and other processes of the elections. Others were falsely branded as foreigners and their citizenship called into question unjustly. An abhorrent nation-wrecking prejudice which has been directed especially against certain ethnic groups of this country and has continued till date and has only recently been visited crudely on our Auditor General Daniel Yao Domelevo. In the last election, unprecedented levels of state funds and resources were doled out by the ruling party and unprovoked deadly violence inflicted on our citizens in several circumstances. In the process, eight of our compatriots were murdered in cold blood, and several others were maimed during the process of the elections. We have designated these compatriots whose blood was shed just because they sought to participate in what is purely a civil exercise as martyrs of democracy to whom we shall dedicate an appropriate monument when the time comes. I hope we can count on all well-meaning Ghanaians to support our efforts to bring the perpetrators of these murders to justice. Never, never must a government be allowed to turn the simple process of an election into a bloodbath. Never must impunity of this magnitude be allowed to fester in our democracy. Our independence and the current democracy we enjoy were fought for and attained through the sacrifice and blood of our founding fathers, mothers, and our compatriots. Never must we accept convenience over principle. I take this opportunity to express my deep-seated appreciation to our lawyers, led by the colossus of a legal mind, Chachuchikata, for a valiant fight, for a valiant fight which has won the admiration of many. Against considerable odds, they persisted and drove home our point in a manner that convinced all fair minded observers the just cause we had embarked on. I express similar gratitude to all who played diverse roles in putting our case together. I salute our three key witnesses. Our General Secretary John Sinasir Dunketia, Dr. Michael Pesa White, and Rojo Metal Nunu, for helping to unravel a part of the untold story of the flawed 2020 elections. I also wish to place on record that the services rendered to me by my legal team in this petition was gratis meaning free of charge. We may not have been successful, but your hard work and sacrifice will not go unheralded when the full story of the 2020 election petition is told. 
I'm very much aware that there are millions watching and listening to me who are also disappointed at the outcome of this case. For those millions like myself who held up hope that our democracy would be advanced by the process and outcome of this petition, you must be disappointed. But I encourage you to hold your heads up high and channel your disappointment into hard work that will ensure that come the next election, we'll achieve a truly transparent and fair election, which all of us as Ghanaians can be proud of. To all my compatriots and supporters, we may have lost the temporary battle of the 2020 election and the petition that has followed. But the larger struggle to create a society that lives up to our national motto of freedom and justice still rages on. It is a struggle that requires even more commitment than before, and it is one that we will not shake from until our patriotic aim is achieved. To the millions of NDC supporters who have stood by me, my running mate, Professor Nana Jenopokwa Jimang, our national chairman, our general secretary, our campaign chairman, functional executive committee members, national executive committee members, our parliamentary candidates, our sponsors who were very generous to us during the campaign, and all activists and supporters who gave us their all and all their efforts in the hope that we'll win and form the next government to save our nation and meet your aspirations. I say to you, do not despair at this outcome. And I repeat, do not despair. Never, ever lose hope. We achieved an impressive showing in the last election. And despite the intimidation, the obscene abuse of incumbency advantage, and the massive use of state funds and resources, we can be proud that we gave it our best. Our achievement has become a stepping stone on which the NDC can build to secure victory in the next elections. The NDC will survive and grow from strength to strength. The sun may have set on our hopes for the just ended election today, but it will rise again tomorrow and it will illuminate our paths to a better outcome the next time round. To the Council of Elders, members of the National Executive Committee of the NDC, the Functional Executive Election 2020 Campaign Team, my staff, party executives at all levels, volunteers, polling agents, and all who played roles in our campaign, no matter how small, I say I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The NDC will always remain the party of the people. The party was established to empower the people of Ghana to be the architects of their own destiny. We blazed the trail for participatory democracy, and I'm confident that out of the ashes of this legal setback, we will mobilize and rekindle the struggle for a better democratic Ghana. We will be law-abiding, and we will do nothing to compromise the stability of this country. We will, however, continue to be the voice of the voiceless, and we will not be distracted from our goal of demanding justice and fairness for the people of Ghana at all times. Neither will we surrender or fail to champion the rights of our people to enjoy the fundamental freedoms guaranteed under our Constitution. To the over six million Ghanaians who trusted their votes, I cannot thank you enough for this honor done me. I value your vote so much. It reflects the confidence you have in our ideology, in our ethos, and most importantly, in the 2020 People's Manifesto that we presented to this nation. Our party has proven to be the most viable path to a rapid socio-economic development of our nation. I can assure you that even though this was not the outcome we expected, I'm sure your votes will spur us on to victory in the future. I also wish to acknowledge and commend the courage and commitment of civil society organizations, religious groups, journalists, and individuals who dedicated their lives to speaking truth to power, irrespective of which individual or party sits at the Flagstaff House. While in office, my administration tolerated your views even when we disagreed with them. 
In similar vein, we encourage you to continue to hold all governments accountable, as you have done in the past, for it is your right to do so. My brothers and sisters, I've had a relatively long and fulfilling journey in public life and service, during which I've had the privilege to serve in various capacity. I've had my ups and downs like all human beings, but I have at all times promoted unity and inclusion and not division wherever I've been. And I've always placed the interest and well-being of Ghana first. I'll continue to do the same even at this moment and beyond. My brothers and sisters, we have only one nation, Ghana, and we must work together to ensure the progress and growth of our dear nation. We can only do this if we ensure equality, freedom, and justice for all our citizens. Long live the NDC. Long live Ghana. I thank you all for your kind attention. And may God continue to bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you very much. God bless you.